Hey guys, today I'm gonna to do something that I never thought that I would do. I paid a scalper for an Intel graphics card. Yeah, you heard that right. I got Sparkle's very, very blue version of the B580 Intel graphics card, and I know what you're thinking. Why would you do that? And trust me, I'm asking myself the exact same thing, but stick around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the card, and I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for it. Spoiler alert, it's bad. It's like, like really, really bad. Check this out. This is the ASRock B580 GPU in a sleek, no-nonsense design. What happened to the Sparkle card? The truth is shipping delays means that it's not here yet, but don't worry. We're gonna take a look at it at the end of the video. For now, this ASRock card is gonna represent Intel's Arc lineup in today's tests. And to represent NVIDIA, we chose the 4060 Ti. 8 gigabyte. And now I know what you're thinking there. Intel said that their Battle Mage card was meant to beat the 4060, not the 4060 Ti. Well, today we wanted to see how close in performance this new Intel card is to the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte. And I have a feeling that the difference is gonna be surprisingly small. That's just, just my personal take, Tanner. Both PCs that we're testing today have identical specs, with the only difference being the graphics cards. Here's a rundown. We've got an AMD Ryzen 5 7600X for the CPU, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and a two terabyte M.2 SSD. We're running Cyberpunk 2077, at 1440p ultra settings. I have a disclaimer for you. We're testing one game and one game only on this benchmarking video. Why? Because it's not really a benchmarking video that you're used to seeing on YouTube. This is a benchmarking video that's a fanciful, would you say fanciful benchmarking video, Tanner? Very. Very fanciful. We wanted to test one game using one card and then an Nvidia card, one Intel, one Nvidia. It ain't that deep. If you want to see a million games benchmarked, there's so many good channels. Here's one. Here's another one. But if you came for the laughs, you came for the love, you came for the sparkle card, then you're in the right place. All right, let's have fun with this. Don't get weird in the comments, all right? And we'll test three scenarios. Native performance with no ray tracing. Then we're going to test these suckers at native performance with ray tracing. And finally, Test both of them with ray tracing and upscaling on. Now the 4060 Ti is gonna use DLSS upscaling and the ASRock B580 is gonna be using Intel's XESS upscaling. This should give us a solid comparison of these two cards and what they bring to the table. Now first up, let's talk about native performance. No upscaling for the ASRock B580. I'm curious to see how this runs on pure rasterization, all right? So we're gonna get this test going. All the settings set, Tanner, we good to go? Yeah. Pure rasterization. Let's run the benchmark here. Five minutes later. All right, so we just finished up benchmarks on Cyberpunk. Check this out. This is the Intel system with the B580. Average FPS, 62, almost 63 frames per second on the benchmark. And this is with everything disabled. DLSS, no DLSS, no upscaling, nothing like that. The 4060 Ti, 57 frames per second. Now, let me remind you, this is a $400 GPU compared to this 250, almost half of the price nearly for this Intel card compared to Nvidia. So the performance is obviously, this is kicking the 4060 Ti's ass, but before all of my Nvidia friends in the comments get upset, let me point this out that should we turn on DLSS and ray tracing, it's going to kick the crap out of this Intel card, I would presume. Obviously, this is Cyberpunk, heavily reliant on some of the upscaling technologies. If you were to use a game like, I don't know, CS2, for example, uh, just imagine what this Intel card would do in that scenario as well. So price to performance is absolutely nuts on here compared to the NVIDIA card. And that is one of the reasons why this Intel card has been so hard to get your hands on. They launched got immediate great reviews and benchmarks, and these have been hard to get so far. I'm sure Intel's scrambling to make more of these cards now that they've become such a smash success. Guys, it's time for ray tracing with no upscaling. This is the part of the test where I think we're gonna see the limits of both cards, but let's start with NVIDIA. This is the ray tracing company. NVIDIA prides themselves on their ray tracing tech. Cyberpunk in 1440p is already a bit taxing, for the 4060 Ti, but when you turn on ray tracing, the frames really start to drop. Let's check it out. Console gamers, you're gonna feel right at home because uh, we pulled 30 frames per second with ray tracing enabled, no upscaling, uh, which is what console gamers are locked to, I think. Is that right, Tanner? 30 frames per second on the old console? I mean, is that they, how that works on Cyberpunk? No, but, but they know, they know it's true. So 30 frames per second on the 4060 Ti, that's with ray tracing on. I'm curious 
what the Intel card does, Tanner. What do you think is going to happen? 40 frames. 40 frames? Okay. 40 frames. Should we find out? Yeah. I, I think so. Let's take a look. Guys, it wouldn't make sense if Intel just absolutely bodied NVIDIA for all these tests, right? Check it out. 26 frames per second. This is with ray tracing on. NVIDIA is the ray tracing king, right? We know this. We we know this. We've come to expect it from NVIDIA. But all in all, I, I'm actually, it's not too far off, Tanner. It's actually pretty dang close. 26 frames per second, the average FPS versus uh, just a touch above 30, 30.2 on the 30, ooh, 40, 60 Ti. I think it's interesting. I think it's close enough, right? It's really close. It's pretty dang close. I think I think less frames looks better, actually. It's more cinematic, right, Tanner? <laughs> Xbox gamers. Xbox gamers unite, rise up. Ray tracing award goes to the ray tracing company as it probably should. But for a $250, $249 GPU, I think 26 frames is probably pretty reasonable, don't you think, on Cyberpunk? Dude, pick your poison. I, I might pick the Intel card in this case, even with the slight dip in performance on this, the price savings is just too dang much. So in looking at both cards, it's clear who the winner is when it comes to ray tracing, but I'm more interested to see if Intel's XDSS upscaling can maybe close the gap. Apparently they've made some big improvements with these new cards and even market this new Battle Mage's ray tracing capable. So let's run the benchmark on both systems one more time with ray tracing on medium and upscaling set to quality. First up is a 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte card with DLSS. Let's check it out. We're getting 55 average FPS. This is with our ray tracing enabled. We've got DLSS upscaling on ray tracing set to medium on this. And this is with the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte edition. I mean, pretty interesting. It's not bad. 55 frames per second. You're still better than a console, right, Tanner? Yeah. It's not too bad. And really, guys, let's get right to the chase here. This is really the point of the whole video right here. If this Intel card can keep up in any way at 1440p, this is just gonna serve as even more proof that it might be the best budget card on the market right now. 51, almost 52 frames per second for the Intel card compared to Nvidia's 55. It's a $400 card versus a $249 card. So budget price to performance wise, the Intel card more than holds its own, all right? Some differences in details in terms of uh, looking a little bit softer and finer details on the XCSS, but still holds its own. And at this point, the ASRock B580 has proven itself. Solid native performance, respectable upscaling gains, and it's compact. If you're building a budget rig, this card should absolutely be on your radar. In fact, we have a bunch of ready to ships using this exact card on our website. Check it out. We have the white version and black version of these Azeroth cards in these pre-built systems as well at metapcs.com. But for now, it's a moment you've all been waiting for, guys. Let's check this out. This is Sparkle B580, and I'm gonna talk about what I paid for it. Sparkle B580, now shipping may have taken forever, but you've gotta admit, this thing is wild. I'm gonna tell you, uh, oh my goodness. Look, it's an S for Sparkle. This is the boldest blue card that you have ever seen in your life. Check this out. Super, super blue. And on the back, there's a B for Battle Mage and for blue. Now guys, what did I pay for this card? Listen, it retails for 269. 20 bucks over the reference Intel card. How much did I pay for it? Guess, guess, $550. Oh, <laughs> Listen, I couldn't find this anywhere. None of our vendors had it. It wasn't available locally. I found a guy on eBay trustworthy gentleman. Now, do I regret it? Absolutely not. Because this card makes me laugh every time that I see it. So should you buy the ASRock B580 or the Sparkle B580? Well, if you're on a budget and can find either at MSRP, they're both solid choices. But scalper prices? Man, dude, learn from my mistakes. Don't do it. If you care about aesthetics, it's nothing better than the Sparkle B580. What do you think this would go with, component-wise? Sonic motherboard. Sonic motherboard. Guys, which, should we do a build of this Sparkle card? Let me know what components you'd like to see us build with this card. I mean, just look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Intel is starting to look like a real contender, guys. Very, very excited about the performance on these. And this about wraps it up for today's video. What do you guys think? Is Intel starting to win you over? Are you sticking with Team Green or Team Red? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more shenanigans. And remember, this is the most important part of this video. Don't buy a graphics card from a scalper, okay? Don't do it.